NVIDIA is the headline, but not the only earnings action today. Let's get the action, the story, and the trade on that one, along with Elf Beauty. Is it Elf or ELF, Kilberg? It's your choice, I don't, You're the I, boss here. I don't know what it is. Also, ELF reminds me of the band back in the day. Well, but then Elf, you feel like they're, are they really, is Elf? And then you think about Will Ferrell, so good point. Exactly, either way. Uh, Jeff Kilberg is here on set. I should mention he is KKM Financial CEO and a CNBC contributor. Let's start with the biggie, obviously, NVIDIA. Their shares are actually a little lower into the print, but they've surged 50% since just the last report, and they've more than doubled this year. They're far and away the best performer in the SMH and practically the whole market. Analysts eyeing growth in gaming and data centers, and of course, in any products related to AI. So, Kilberg, what do you do with the stock and what about earnings? Well, I think if you own the stock, you have to hold it here because think about, you know, we're talking about percentages. Yes, up over 110 percent. However, in 2022, we were down 50 percent. So if you look at the price and price is important, Kelly, the price right now is sitting here at $300. That's where we started the year in 2022. So if you think about a stock like this, it has a high beta, beta of 2.18. This is a high flying name. But if you think about NVIDIA, the last two letters, Kelly, are AI. <laughs> so when you talk about AI, you flip it's the it around, nucleus. Though. You yeah. don't have to flip it around. Maybe I'm dyslexic. But nonetheless, you have to think about being the nucleus of AI and this whole movement. Every single story we've heard this earnings season has been fantastic and exceeded the upside. Look at Palo Alto Network, cybersecurity. What do they need for cybersecurity? Chips. So I think when you bring it all together, I think you will see a beat. But at the end of the day, we're back to where we started, Kelly, at this monster $700 billion market cap. Right, although a lot of companies would be happy to be back where they were in Jan of 22. Is, are you seeing any signs of being toppy? You know, relative strength, over, you know, to moving averages, anything like that? I would love to say it was overbought going into earnings because it's up 15% in the last 30 days where the S&P is up 1%. So, yes, there's a little bit of apprehension there, but I think there's more room to run. But what's going to be key about this earnings cycle, specifically the forward guidance, when you talk about are they going to be absolutely, you know, high, going into this season, you talk about the chips. Are people really hoarding those chips? Remember the toilet paper they were hoarding back in the day in mm -hmm. COVID? Will they be hoarding chips? But if they just elude to the fact that we are going to see more and more focus on AI, which we will, is what we've heard, I think the stock has the ability to move higher just on that forward guidance. Interesting. All right, let's move along and talk. You'd think this next one was an AI stock, but it's not. It's Elf Beauty. We're just going to go with that, which is practically acting like an AI play. It's up more than 50 percent this year and up 300 percent over the past year. The beauty category has been strong for a while. Some key points to watch here are gross margins as promotions potentially rise, retail versus online breakdown, any guidance on the consumer. Thoughts on this stock? I mean, talk about an under-the-radar high flyer. Sensational. And this is a nearly $5 billion market cap. Think about Estee Lauder, nearly $60 billion. So this is a much smaller player. But nonetheless, if you've owned this stock, I think you have to be more considerate of risk mitigation. So we talk a lot about options, and not to get too wonky here, Kelly, but I think you can sell the 100 call. You're going out 23 days, and that expiration allows you to bring in a little income. You're selling it, collecting about $1.50. Then you're going to buy that $75 strike price put. So that spread costs you 50 cents to insure your position. So if you've seen this 300% appreciation, I think you walk into an option overlay and lock it down. However, you see exaggeration in a stock like this. It's a 50 times forward earn. I have to stay away. I would not initiate a position, but I would protect the position utilizing options if I have it in my portfolio. Interesting. So, I mean, can I call that a bearish take, sort of? On, uh, you can call it an apprehensive take. An apprehensive. Because you know, that's a parabolic move, and yeah. you never want to short a position like that, but you do want to consider taking profits. No one's ever gone broke taking profits, Kelly. <laughs> Let's stick with Dollar Tree then. They're the next one, and the value retailer is only up about 10% this year. We'll watch guidance, recent spending trends, any updates on planned store openings and expansions. Um, of course, kind of a longtime rivalry with this one, and Dollar General. Dollar General, I think, is perceived as kind of the better operator, maybe the, the FedEx to the UPS, although maybe they've switched places now. Well, that's where I think it's really interesting because, yes, maybe that was perception before, but Dollar Tree now, they've brought in a lot of new talent to the C-suite. I know Michael Crean was an addition to that C-suite. So you think about what the talent they're bringing in, the distribution they have, over 8,000 stores. So I think, yes, as it sits in between its 52-week range, there's an opportunity here to buy this name because I think they're going to continue to reinvent the talent they're bringing in. I like that. And at the end of the day, a five-year look back, Kelly, is lock and step with the S&P 500. But there are moments in time where the Dollar Tree does have the ability. And if we do have some apprehension with investors and consumers moving forward, a name like Dollar Tree should prevail in Q3, Q4. Quickly, since apprehension is a, a little mini theme here, other than NVIDIA, what about the VIX above 20 today on what's a little bit more um, vociferous of a, of a down move? If I no, can call it it's that. a great point you bring up. So we look at volatility all the time, and I think the VIX really is exaggerating the fact that, you know, a couple days ago, we were annoyed with the debt ceiling drama. 
Now maybe we're getting a little bothered. So we haven't moved into panic by any means because the VIX is just above 20. If it gets closer to 25 or 30, but we don't know when this debt ceiling drama is going to stop. Some people are putting different targets, nine more days, 15 more days. So it'll be really fascinating to see how that works out. But I believe, and I think the institutional traders and the hedge funds and the family offices that I talk to, they're not overly worried. They're going to come to resolution, but there's going to be a lot of political punches thrown between now and then. No, I like from annoyed to bothered. That is the change in market That's sentiment right. today. It is, it is palpable. Jeff, thank you so much. Thank we appreciate you, it. Thank you for coming in. Jeff Kilberg. Coming up.